Sunday, October 24th, and I want to welcome you to the month of Striketober. And why can I say that? Why do I call it Striketober? Because there are many workers in this country who have gone out on strike. They have gone out on strike because they've been working long and hard hours during the pandemic, and their work has not really been appreciated. And these strikes are not only union workers, but non-union workers are on strike also. And then there's something that is not even a strike, but it looks like a strike. It acts like a strike. There are 4.2 million people who have just refused to continue to work. That's an amazing stat when you consider the shape of the economy and the need for workers. Now, U.S. labor unions have been on the defensive for decades, but given the pandemic and the working conditions that their workers have been forced to undergo, working shifts that last for 12 hours, working weeks without a day off, and companies making huge profits and not willing to share those profits with the workers, the scale of the strikes is pretty astounding. You have 10,000 John Deere workers who have gone on strike, 1,400 Kellogg workers who have walked out, and 30,000 Kaiser Permanente workers have threatened to strike. These workers believe they are entitled to substantial wages. They have continued to work through this labor shortage for the benefits of their companies. And their companies have not really appreciated. Here's an example. A young man who works at Deere, John Deere's palm equipment factory, makes $20.82 an hour. He's been there for 19 years. 19 years making $20.82 an hour now. And John Deere is just offering a dollar an hour increase. When their profits went up double, 50% to $5.7 billion. That's twice as much as they earned last year. So why? Why are these companies not treating their employees? You don't have to go overly generous, but you have to be fair. And John Deere's CEO had a pay raise of 160%. He's now making $16 million a year. So what makes him so valuable? He is not doing any of the real work. He's not producing the product. He may be managing a company that's making lots of money. But you've got to give a little bit back to the, to the employees, not just to the big shots. Then there are other stories. There are stories of companies that are hiring new employees but not giving them the same benefits as the older employees and reducing the new employees' pay to far below what the older employees are earning. And then take a look at Kellogg. Kellogg is now offering a $13 cut in top pay for new workers. They want to create a permanent two-tier structure. So the new employees are coming in without the benefits and without the money that the older workers are making. That's not the right thing to do. That's not right at all. And the workers have made many concessions to Kellogg's and to other companies. The companies are acting greedy. And there's no need for greed. They're making tons of money these days. And Kellogg has said their compensation is the best in the industry. So what? 
So what? If you want to be the leader, you pay the best. And there are other strikes besides Deere and Kellogg. It's 400 workers at the Heaven Hill Bourbon Distillery in Kentucky that, that have been on strike for six weeks. And the thousand coal miners in Alabama have been on strike since April. And then there's hundreds of nurses at Mercy Hospital in Buffalo who went on strike on October 1st. And they went on strike, and the new nurses that are going to be hired, they are going to get less money than the old workers. Does that make any sense in this environment? In this environment, we have to keep everybody happy, and we have to treat them fairly. And then you got 450 steel workers in Mansion State who on strike. So this country is going downhill fast, and we're struggling every which way but Sunday, you know? And another thing, Kaiser Permanente, it's a non-profit, and they have $45 billion in reserves, and they're not prepared to part with any of that money for their workers. And they have signs all over the place, because Pfizer of Permanente is in the health care business. Signs all over the place that say, heroes work here. But it doesn't say that heroes work here for pennies. So they got all that money and they offer a 1% raise. And the workers who have worked so hard view that as a slap in the face. And then you got this company and they propose hiring new nurses at 25%, less than the current ones earn. Now that will definitely definite ensure a shortage of nurses because unions have taken a very poor approach in recent years in the area of organizing. And I don't think that many in this country really want to join unions. But maybe if they saw the unions winning bigger concessions from the companies, maybe they would consider joining. But I wouldn't bank on that. I wouldn't bank on You know what's amazing? One would have thought that given these terrible conditions and given the fact that we were fighting for our lives and people were trapped in a terrible situation, that there would be some compassion in the corporate world. And maybe there are. Maybe there are some compassions in some of them. But I seriously believe that the corporate world is only interested in one thing. It's the bottom line. And the old mentality screw the workers, squeeze the workers, is still in effect. That hasn't changed. You would have thought that that ended a long time ago. But here we are in October of 2021, and we are seeing what happened 100 years ago in the labor industry to workforces. So, Terrible times bring out terrible things in corporations and people. And that's all I want to tell you about this this morning. This morning. It's Strike Toba. Have a great day. Bye.